The question that I've posed here has significantly shaped my research investigations over the past 25 years or so, and it's a question that matters today. How did human environmental adaptations arise? Do those adaptations channel us in certain prescribed ways of interacting with our surroundings? Or are we perhaps a more nimble species with a dynamic capacity to recognize and to adjust to new environmental challenges? The ways in which we see our predecessors as we look at some reconstructions is that we see in them uh, many of the defining traits that characterize Homo sapiens, our species, and yet their ways of life have become extinct. And so I've long wondered what capacities did these predecessors of ours possess to uh, respond to and adjust to new environmental challenges and to climate change. The usual ways in which paleoanthropologists respond to this question is through the savanna hypothesis. Back to six million years ago, you put the earliest hominin ancestors uh, into an, uh, a drying African uh, savanna and from that comes an evolutionary cascade of all things human, from bipedal walking to tool making, large brains, complex sociality. My excursion into this topic, the uh, subject of the environmental context of human evolution began and continues here in the Southern Kenya Rift at the sites of Alorga Sile. It's an extraordinary archive of environmental change, fossil animals, and the archeological signals of how human ancestors actually from Homo erectus through Homo sapiens interacted with their surroundings. It's an archive that goes back, uh, that records the last 1.2 million years of time. 25 years ago, I walked up this hillside and it changed my research career. Each hillside is a slice of time. These particular layers are about 1 million years old. Let's just take about a 2,000 year time slice uh, in that hillside. And what you can see is the back and forth nature of changing climates between wet and dry. And this made me wonder whether in fact human evolutionary adaptations were largely driven through the constant pressures, challenges of the African savanna or whether our environmental adaptations actually are a reflection of the fact that things change all the time. And so this led me into the environmental sciences, although it's common knowledge now in the earth sciences, it was really astonishing to me 25 years ago when I um, uncovered, when I found out what you can learn from a, a drill bore from the deep sea, in this case oxygen isotope data for the past 10 million years with the present on the, uh, on the left. And you can see the overall uh, trend toward a cooler uh, planet as you get closer to the present. But what really interested me were the fluctuations. After six million years ago, which happens to correspond with the period of human evolution, you see a, real, a really uh, dramatic increase in the uh, amount of fluctuation. By three million years ago, glacial fluctuations uh, between very warm and very cold climates uh, occurred and our genus, the genus Homo, evolved during the strongest fluctuations. Another way of looking at this is that you see a, a generalized environmental curve of fluctuation on the left. And out of the variety of responses, I became extremely interested in the one on the right, the response on the right, where the envelope of adaptability can increase. And I wondered, is there an evolutionary process that can help us wrap our minds around how that can occur, how adaptability can evolve and increase over time. In 1996, in a piece I published in Science and a book I published that year, I, I coined the term for such a process, variability selection. It's a kind of a filtering process that with an increase in uh, the instability of environments or the variability in survival uh, conditions, that this filtering process favors certain combinations of genes that enhance, that enhance the plasticity of the organism and the adaptability of its lineage in ways that widen the options available to that organism, uh, that is the way its species uses its surroundings. This is not adaptation to a monolithic, uh, single uh, African savanna type of habitat, but rather it's adaptation to change itself. And it confers a certain uh, res uh, responsiveness to the organism uh, to novel environmental challenges. Well, we have learned a great deal about African environmental uh, variability uh, in, uh, in recent years of study. 
Uh, and what I've done here is to show that uh, based on the idea that there are these alternating periods of high and low climate variability over time. That's the new framework. And I've uh, outlined the, uh, defined the eight periods of uh, longest high climate variability uh, over the past five million years. The numbers on the right are in thousands of years. And I wondered, given the current fossil and archeological record, um, did anything interesting go on during these long high climate variability time periods? And the results are kind of interesting based on first and last appearances now that all, all of the ge uh, genera that essentially define the human evolutionary tree, Australopithecus, Homo, and Paranthropus, happen to have their first appearances during, a high, during high climate variability. And all of the major changes in, in stone technology and the ways that early ancestors interacted with their surroundings, Oldowan, Silurian, and the Middle Stone Age, also have their first appearances and evolutionary developments during, the, um, during high climate variability periods. I just want to finish with that last uh, period, the last 356,000 years. We go back to Alorgosaile. By 300,000 years ago, we see the demise of hand axes and the origin of the human capacity to innovate. We also see during that time a major transition in the fauna of Africa, of East Africa during that time. Wouldn't it be cool if we could find a high precision environmental record from the site where this occurs? And in fact, that's what we intend to do starting in September, a drill port that will recover 600,000 years of high resolution climate uh, that will probably determine my research career for the next few years. Thanks very much. The question is about the uh, periods of high climate variability and how do we measure that. Um, first of all, the, the uh, time boundaries between uh, the high and low climate variability periods are based on theoretical model of orbital eccentricity modulating precession. So basically amplifying and depressing uh, the amount of uh, variability of, uh, between um, high rainfall periods and high periods of drought. And then we look in places like Olduvai Gorge, the Turkana Basin, Alorgis Isle, and elsewhere, and actually um, look for evidence of whether those are confirmed and an increasing number of uh, geological studies, environmental studies in those basins are confirming literature. 